Hey guys, it's James over at the Wrestling Epicenter. I want to thank you for taking the time to check us out here on YouTube. If you haven't already done so, please do me a favor and click that subscribe button. Keep yourself informed on the latest videos that we upload. In addition, if you would do us a favor and slam that like button for us as well, maybe even share it on Facebook and Twitter, we would sure appreciate it. Let everyone know what you're listening to. Without any further delay, let's get to your video here on YouTube. The following announcement has been paid for by the Wrestling Epicenter. Hey, hey everybody. Hey, guys. Hello, ladies. Remember me? <laughs> Let me talk to you, dummies. It's now time. It's their time. TikTok. It's showtime. For the longest running wrestling talk show in history. We are huge. Gonna be cool. You're where it's at. You're smart like me. Tune in each and every week. It's better keep listening. Or I'll come out of your computer and turn it on for you. Or else I'm gonna kick your sick of teeth in. We've been known by a few names. The needs of the many far outweigh the needs of the few. The interactive interview. Interactive interview. Oh yeah. Interactive interview. The interactive interview. Interactive interview. The interactive interview. Interactive wrestling radio. 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 The Blaze. Blaze, 1260 AM. The Blaze. The Blaze. Blaze. The Blaze Rock. And a lot of other names. Weekend Warrior of Wrestling. The Pile Driver. The Epa Wrestling Center. Street Count Wrestling. <laughs> the Hour Slab. But it's all one show. The Wrestling Epicenter. Wrestling Epicenter. The Wrestling Epicenter. The Epicenter. Wrestling Epicenter, dude. The Wrestling Epicenter. Don't get off. And your host from day one. By ignorance or arrogance. James Walsh. Wake up, sleepyheads. Dr. Carolas. It all starts. What a rush. Thank you very much. I got two words for you. Thumb down. Breaking necks and cash and checks. I've heard a lot about you guys. Check it out. Get out of my face. <laughs> you win. But I'm desperately out of time. So what you gonna do when Blaze Mania runs wild on you? Now. Hey guys, welcome to an out-of-quarantine, kind of, sort of, episode of Interactive Wrestling Radio right here on WrestlingEpicenter.com. With that in mind, we have a great interview for you this week. It is with a young guy who has been making a lot of waves over at Impact Wrestling and will be challenging very soon for that Impact Wrestling X Division Championship against Willie Mack. But first, he's got to team up with our buddy, a gentleman was on our show a few months ago before he signed with Impact Wrestling, and I think we might have helped him a little bit. I'm talking, of course, about Johnny Swinger in the Finesse and Bench Press Express. Not an easy name to say. We'll be teaming with him next week on Impact Wrestling. Great duo. They have a lot of uh, comedic timing together. If you haven't been watching Impact and why the hell haven't you been, check it out. Especially the recent backstage segment with Madison Rain and, and the, those two is very funny stuff. Anyway, let's get to that interview right here on WrestlingEpicenter.com. I encourage you to check out Impact Wrestling every Tuesday night on Access TV. Also check out Impact in 60. They're really taking advantage of their extensive video library going over some of the best memories of Impact history. They just did the Asylum years, and now they're going to be doing one that goes over the Aces and Eights. They got one specializing on McFoley. They really should do a, a knockout special. I think that would be the highest narrated thing that they'll do, but I'm sure that's on the way. This is Johnny Swinger, and you are in the Wrestling Epicenter, so don't sing it. Swing it. Welcome back to Interactive Wrestling Radio. On the Newsmaker line with me right now is a young man who is making big waves over at Impact Wrestling as one of the hot new stars signed to them just a few months ago. He is Chris Bay. Mr. Bay, are you with me? Yeah, that's me. Chris Bay, hot new talent. That's me, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I'll tell you what. I'm in Mesa, Arizona, the same as the, uh, the world-famous Nile Theater. So 
I actually have been watching you for quite some time. Oh, wow, yeah, the Nile Theater. That takes me back. Yes, sir, yes, sir. So, it, And I was going to actually start with that question. Um, I kind of celebrate your, your victories, seeing you grow as a talent, because I saw you, it got to be two years ago or more, and then, you know, then I see you at Ring Warriors, and I think, oh, great, he's on national television. And then I see you making appearances for other companies, and now, of course, signed to Impact Wrestling. Congratulations on the, uh, on the great new spot there. How has it been so far in your time in Impact Wrestling? So far, so great. I love it. I, um, I'm very happy with being a part of Impact Wrestling, and um, I'm very excited for what we are going to do going forward. And just being able to be a part of uh, wrestling right now is great. This is, this is my life, you know. This is everything I love. So to be here and to be a part of this team with the history that we have and to be in the process of creating my own history it's super sweet. I, I'm excited. I, uh, I still have to pinch myself sometimes. Absolutely. And you mentioned the way wrestling is right now. It is, you know, maybe maybe uh, where we are right now with the with the virus and all that aside, um, wrestling was in a hot place a couple months ago, and your name was all over the place. One guy mentioned you from another company, an executive, that he wanted to sign you, and then that same day it was announced that you had signed with Impact Wrestling. So you're... <laughs> Yeah, uh, all over the place right now, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, those are one of those things that you just never predict, but they happen, and it's super cool. But you got to keep rolling. You know what's next? All right. Well, um, right now you are partnering with an, an veteran. Uh, you are in a tag team of sorts with your your buddy. I can't quite get if he's supposed to be Buff Bagwell or Hulk Hogan half the time, but of course I'm talking about the great Johnny Swinger. How are you enjoying uh, teaming with Johnny Swinger? Are you learning from somebody with his vast experience? I am. Uh, I'm. I'm loving teaming with Johnny Swinger. Johnny Swinger is. Uh, he's hilarious. That guy is hilarious, and he's very entertaining. So if you don't know, you should definitely check it out. I'm glad you know because I'm still trying to figure out exactly what he is too, other than entertaining or you know, who he's supposed to be. But that's the Swingman, Daddy. So. You know, he's got the moves, he's got the, he's got the gimmicks and the fanny pack. He's teaching me a lot that I can take going forward to my next. He reminds me of the chat. guy, like, at the gym who's, like, maybe 50. And I know Johnny's nowhere near that age, but he reminds me of that guy at the gym who looks like time stood still for 20 years, and it's like, you just you can't figure out what happened there. But <laughs> <laughs> I think we all know that. There's somebody in our lives like that. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's mine. I got I got my own Johnny Swinger. There you go. You, are you liking the name, the fitness, and uh, the the name that he came up with, the the finesse and uh, bench press bench express. Press express, yeah. <laughs> there you it go. works for me. <laughs> but as long as it's got finesse in it, and then he says bench press express. So I got a pretty good bench press myself. You know, I know he's got a wider chest than I do. I mean, his singlet hangs off the outside of his chest. But either way, that aside, the bench press finesse, finesse and bench press express works for me because I bench too. So we're all good. He's basically describing each other, right. but I'll, I'll say that it's for both of us. That's perfect. That's perfect. So the X Division champion right now is somebody that you have in your sights, and that is Willie Mack. And Willie Mack does not fit the usual description of what an X Division wrestler typically works with or looks like. Um, but you know what? They always did say it's not about weight limits. It's about no limits. What do you think of your feud right now with Willie Mack? Well, um... Yeah, he's not the traditional, but whenever I think of a non-traditional X Division, I think of, you know, Samoa Joe. Willie Mack, um, mm -hmm. currently being the X Division champion, it's super cool. And um, for him, because I've known him for a while, I know uh, how hard he works and how and how humble he is. So it's super cool that he was able to win the championship from Ace Austin. And right now he's cruising around with the X Division championship and he's wearing it very proudly and he's putting on some great quality performances, but unfortunately for him, I'm on his tail right now, right? And I want the championship probably a lot more than he ever wanted it. And now he has it, so now he's the target. And unfortunately for him, I got a great aim because I'm focused right on him, and I'm not going to rest. I'm not going to let him rest until that title comes home to me. I need that X Division championship, and to take it from Willie Mack is going to make it that much more sweet because the level of respect I have for him 
it's just going to transfer. It's going to transfer the energy through all the respect I already have for the heritage of the championship. And all of that's going to combine to make a sweet, sweet, sweet strap to put around my waist. Very good. So I like to do my research before we do uh, interviews. And I saw a few interviews you did literally right after you had joined Impact Wrestling. And you discussed how cool it was that, you know, 11 years ago, you were doing YouTube videos holding the replica TNA championship. And now the real TNA championship is back on the picture. And it wasn't then. Um, so I guess my question would be, if you ever did challenge for the heavyweight title, would it be more for Moose's TNA World Championship or Tessa Blanchard's Impact Wrestling World Championship? Ooh, see, that, that, that's a, that's a hard-hitting question right there. I like that one. I, um, <laughs> I don't think I, I have a preference because, like you said, you take me back 11 years and I was the kid unboxing the TNA Heavyweight Championship, and now you ask me would I rather face off for that one or the Impact Championship. Well, I think if we're being honest, I want both. <laughs> I want both. And <laughs> I, I need both of those. Um, we can start with uh, the Impact World Championship, taking that from Tessa, and we can let Moose keep parading around with the other championship until I'm ready to come for the final boss, you know what I'm saying? Until I'm ready to come at the big boss's head, I'm going to just stick with the Impact Championship and then come back around, circle back around, see, see if Moose still having his fun and then we'll have some fun. Very good, very good. So I'm not going to talk much about COVID-19. I think we're all covid 19 out, but I just wanted to ask, what's it like performing in front of an empty arena and how come it doesn't seem as overbearing the, the silence of watching an impact show as it does watching some of the other shows? It doesn't seem like it's a, uh, filmed in a vacuum as much as the other shows. Um, well, it's possible and I'm, and I'm not sure because I don't really watch a lot of other products. I I, mm -hmm. I I only watch our products, so but it's possible that you know maybe other companies could have relied on the audio of um, the audience to feel what they're doing in the in the ring or um, what they're talking about on the commentary or however, however it may or may not go. I know for us, uh, it's easier for me um, to perform in this situation because when I came up training i was doing practice matches every single day in front of nobody and uh filming them for myself and then watching them back and get it to people to get critiques or whatever and get feedback but i was performing in front of nobody and essentially performing for cameras um in my in my initial training so now to switch over to not performing in front of a crowd it's already what i what i was doing before it's just now this is the live take and this isn't you know something that only I'm going to see or someone um, or a handful of people are going to see. This is for the world to see now. So that's like the biggest difference for me, but it's not very like uncomfortable or anything by that sake, because it just gives me a chance to um, talk more trash or, you know, be more of a character, translate more to the audience at home. I think we just do it better right. because um, we just do things better. I, you know, I, just, I mean, it's biased, but I feel, you know, we just have a great product for people and people just, choose to sleep on it for whatever reason that is but if you actually watch they'll tell you you know our product is great and what we put out is great and i just think our roster is working very hard and um not just us in the ring but you know josh matthews madison rain who's ever on commentary they're working very hard mm -hmm. to um make it the best possible show absolutely and you've said that in other interviews as well that you know people still are sleeping on impact wrestling and it's been my favorite company since 2002. I was watching the first night, and I'm still watching now. And I mean, I, I've gone through all the waves with it. What needs to happen to recapture everybody to say, "Hey, we're going to watch this because this is the one of the big companies in this world." Right, right, hundred percent. All right. So you're an interesting guy to follow on social media. You never really know what you're going to put out there, and. You're a very creative person, too, with music. Um, did you want to talk a little bit about what you have coming out from your music side of uh, your career? Yeah, I can. I, uh, so I, I've been making music a long, long time. So music's always been a part of my life. I just put it um, aside when I started training to wrestle so I could make that the, the focus. And now I'm at a point where I can do both. And it's cool. I, I have two songs currently released on all platforms. Um, 
Spotify, uh, Apple Music, Pandora, iHeartRadio, whatever you have, uh, Amazon, wherever you have, it's on there, YouTube. It's everywhere. And then um, I have a new EP called Odyssey that should be dropping at the end of June. So stay tuned for that. But um, yeah, it's, it's just music is very important to me. It's a very important part of expression. And it's always been a part of my life. So I'm glad that people are able to hear it now. People are able to enjoy it. And I have the, the luxury of doing both because wrestling has always been number one in my heart. It's always been everything to me, but I've always written music. I've always um, made music. I've always wanted to make music. So for me to be able to do both just fills my heart completely. Can you see yourself maybe doing your own theme song and having the audience sing it as you come to the ring like we've seen in other companies? It's very possible. See, I've always I've always thought about keeping my music separate from the wrestling, but it's mainly until I find that song that I feel like just uh, bridges the gap. There you go. So last night, Impact made a lot of headlines and uh, basically started the rumor mills going with their Slammiversary commercial. Everybody's happy to see Slammiversary coming back, but also very much teasing that some of the WWE departures might be uh, appearing for Impact Wrestling. Maybe even some guys who used to be with Impact Wrestling returning to Impact Wrestling. Um, any thoughts on that and any thoughts on who you'd like to see from that group in Impact Wrestling again? Honestly, I, I saw the um, I saw the trailer, I saw it, and I was just as excited as everybody else. I'm, I'm one of those people who wants to work with everybody. So uh, given the the landscape of professional wrestling right now and everything we know about all the releases. I've looked at it immediately as unfortunate for people to lose their jobs, but I knew that for wrestling, this could be great because now we can mix up the talent pool and composition and throw in some new characters from different um, aspects. It can just switch over. And I think it's, I think it's cool. Like I saw a couple people in that uh, trailer that specifically I was just like, oh, wow, like this could be super sweet, you know, um, as far as like tag teams, you know, there's a tag team in there that we all saw that I think you mix those guys in with the North or you mix them in with, you know, Triple XL or, or the Kuyas or the Rascals and we got, we got something on our hands, you know, uh, we, we got some, some big money matchups, some new tag team matchups that combinations that haven't been seen before. So I just think it's cool because it's providing uh, new content for everybody in the first place. I want everybody on that list. I want every single one of them. If it's a tag team, put me in a swinger in there. The finesse and bench press express, I guess. If it's a singles wrestler, <laughs> go ahead, put me in there. You know, maybe in the future after I win this X Division Championship, maybe I'll defend it against one of them who's coming back because, you know, they're hot or something like that. I just, think it's, I just think it's dope. We get to get new talent in to filter through. All right, all right. Um, so kind of a personal kind of question for you. I know you've worked for Impact in Samstown Live, but that was before you really were signed there. When life returns to the way we used to know it and you're able to travel, is it going to be cool for you to be as a full-time Impact Wrestling employee performing in front of what's kind of become your adopted hometown of Las Vegas? Oh, yeah. I um, I love wrestling here in Vegas um, because it's just it's it's everything that I've that I've wanted to do when I came to Vegas. I came to Vegas and I was setting up rings and, you know, doing the ring crew. And we, whenever we'd come to Samstown, I would just work security for those shows. So now that building has become very important to me. You know, I made impact debuts in that building and I've, uh, you know, won championships in that building. And honestly, the first time I, I faced off of the Impact World Championship was in that building for Ring Warriors against uh, Austin Aries. So, you that's know, true. I a, that's I true. I forgot about things. that. Yeah, see, you forgot I didn't, right? It's uh, <laughs> it's, it's, but that that's how many things that I've been able to do in that building. So to come back home, uh, to Vegas, and perform and do what I love to do, what I started doing here, and what these fans were the first to see me do, and now to do it on this major platform, it's it's everything. It's everything. All right, final question that I'll let you get on with your day. Uh, kind of a kind of a hard one to answer. So nobody could have predicted what the year was going to look like in January, but how do you see the rest of the year playing out for Impact Wrestling? What do you think we're going to see for the rest of 2020 for Impact Wrestling? Um, I think we're going to see more compelling storylines. I think we're going to see some great um, some great cinemat uh, cinematic segments. I think we're going to see 
new fresh matches that we have not seen before because once again uh integrating new talent i think we're going to see uh a huge huge boost in the knockouts division if you've been paying attention to everything that's going on in the knockouts division it's always been great mm-hmm. but you know, it's it's only getting better and better and better and better. So I Kyrie Gray, Diana Perrazzo, absolutely. Oh, you know, it's huge. So, just huge. I was stoked when I saw Diana Perrazzo being a part mm-hmm. of Impact Wrestling. So we're going to see a huge boost in that. We're going to see, I predict, a boost in the ratings. We've been trending on Twitter. And uh, I just think we're just going to see um, people, uh, a large percentage of people, start to accept this resurgence of Impact Wrestling. Absolutely. I hope you're right. I think you are right, and I'm enjoying your guys' uh, part of the of the picture here. Hey, before I let you go, can I ask for one last favor from you? Go ahead. You probably already know what I'm going to ask, but do you mind if I get a drop from you just saying this is Chris Bay, and you're listening to the Wrestling Epicenter? Yeah, I got you. Whenever you're ready. All right, I'll do the Wayne's World countdown here for you. We'll do it in five, four, three, two. Yo, this is the ultimate finesse, Chris Bay, and you are listening to The Wrestling The Epicenter. preceding announcement was paid for by The Wrestling Epicenter. I'm a listen, and if you like what you heard, I'm glad. If you didn't like what you heard, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Most people don't hung up on me. <laughs> we had a lovely conversation. <laughs> <laughs> what a show. Oh, mercy, daddy. I'm the radio dial. Don't hang up. Bye-bye.